Hi, I'm Peter Chittenden from Deal, Kent, England. Um, this is how to make a mobility scooter go faster using motorcycle sprockets and different spaces and pieces. Right, these are Vespa wheels that I picked up from eBay at a good price. What I've done is I've sanded off the studs because I don't need them, they're in the way. Because they're very hard, and I was blunting my drill bits. I've heated, I've heated them up by sanding them off with using a 60 flap disc um, on an angle grinder to get them hot, which has took the temper out of them because it was messing up the drill bits. Right now, to use these scooter wheels off of these Lambrettas, what I've done is I've got <coughs> some six mil alley plate. This is going on the inside. I want it on the deepest side because um, I want the shallowest side uh, on the inside rather. I need the shallow side on the inside so that I can get the sprockets on so the deep bit's going on the outside. So what I've done is I've got that. Then I've got a couple of bits drilled out to make that thickness. Yep. Then I've got a two mil. These are two mil, both of them. This is a two mil. This goes on the outside and then they bolt together like that. And one of these shock riders goes in there. Okay, like that one there that's going to be a front wheel. Right, this is one I've already done. Also these, these are spacers and this is to get the sprocket to go inside further because this is a cord over back end and the plan is this is going to go on go on and chain drive another couple of dummy axles right which um, I'll talk about in a minute right okay this is 25 millimeter bright steel these are 25 mil pillar block bearings that I got from eBay, free postage from China. That's that basically. I'm expecting this to go from an eight mile an hour scooter to probably shove it up to about uh, maybe 15, 18, whatever. Right, this is six mil aluminium plate. You can get off cuts to do this with which is cheap enough because if you buy a three and a quarter inch piece of aluminium and start parting it off on a lathe, A, it's really expensive, 26 quid for something that long, whereas you can pick these things up easy enough. Right, because I wanted three and a quarter inches inside, I've bought this cutting disc, this, which is... Um, um, three and a half I think, 89 mil, right, which cuts them out. If you use cutting all and a slow speed on a pillar drill, okay, you can cut them out there. Then when you've cut them out, you'll end up with, um, there's a couple of blanks here somewhere. You'll end, you'll end up with this that you've cut out of there. And then to cut out the middle, if you screw a couple of screws there so you can use the same hole and then you get away with one of these to take the middle out. It's not quite perfect the right size so you, you have to get a flat wheel and spin it round until it fits on here. Good. Well it's supposed to anyway. They're a bit tight because I've, I've done them like that but they, they go on there. Okay. And they've, they've fit on there, that was a bit tight. Right, anyway, then you can drill them out. You can drill them out. Now on this one, because the wheel is going on these back axle and I need a wheel, not just a sprocket, I've re-drilled this sprocket. Right, now this sprocket is... Um, 118 stroke 24 if you want to buy one these were 694 on ebay and i've re-drilled the sprocket rather 
rather than using the same holes, I've I've re-drilled it with the so with so that it's the same holes as the shock rider one. I've redrilled the sprocket rather than these. Right on the, the one that's going on there with no I've re-drilled it to the sprocket holes, if you get what I mean. And then that fits on there with a the keyway better. Anyway, I've I've done I did 18. I did 18 of these spaces. Now, because I'm only I'm not I've took off the brake fitting because I don't need that. I've took that off, it's in the way, and this doesn't go on enough. I am waiting for some bolts to come from bolt base that are allen key bolts to go in here to tighten these up the right length. This is just a temporary thing to get my plan going. Right, and also when that goes on there with the plate, it's just a nice bit of clearance on there. Right, now, to fit four of these on here, and you're going on that side with them, what you need to do is to chamfer that out of there, so it goes on there flat, so that you can put four on there. So you can get four of them on there, and then, the sprocket, yep, and then that goes on, and then that bolts through for your wheel. Okay, so that's that. This size of this one, I didn't tell you, this is inch and three quarter, 44 mil. Now, these are 45 mil, so you need to try to take half a mil out with the flat disc. Right. Now the ones that want 25 mil on the end, that are going to go on the shaft at the end of them, I've done the same thing, I've drilled them out of there, but instead of putting the inch and three quarters in the middle, I've just gone through with that one, which is a 25 mil, so it goes on there like that, so the sprocket can't kind of get away or move out of line or anything, yep. I'd have countersunk these ones. Right. Now, these pillar block bearings, what I'm going to have to do is <clears throat> also what you can use, a quick thing, if you can get the right size saucepans and you take these, these bits off, yep, you can, you can drill that out and the, as hubcaps, these work out brilliant as hubcaps saucepan lids, if you can find them the same, a pair or four, if you're going to use four same wheels, put them on there and then you can weld a little bracket up, going over with a stud through so you can get a nice shiny big dome head on, like I've done on my red car if you look on the internet. Right, on the front end of the car when I do this, because it would hit the chassis and things, I'm going to have to probably weld the front of the car because I'd like to put bigger wheels on the front as well as the back because on some of the dragsters I've done, as soon as you jack up the back with bigger wheels and the front's down, instead of the steering doing this, this is exaggerated, it's kind of trying to do this, flap up and down and you'll get a bit of a, uh, the steering's not so clever, so it's good to Try and keep it horizontal, right? That's that. I'm trying to think of anything else I need to explain. On these wheels, what I'm going to do here to use these pillar block bearings, I'm going to have to, where this wheel is going to go along here, and by the way, I've put it on there, so there's just enough, there's enough clearance for the chain to miss the tyre and then obviously I'm going to have to go back far enough to clear to clear the sprocket and the tyre so I'm going to have to that's the length of the chain roughly it's going to be by the way these sprockets are 420 chain 420 that's the chain you need to get and if you're going to do this the same as I I'm hoping to do, 
because this is a new adventure. These are Yamaha sprockets, these two back ones. And the number that's on this Yamaha sprocket is JTR 832-46, 46 teeth. And this one, as I say, is a 118 stroke 24 teeth. So that's what you're doing. And by putting that on the drive of the normal mobility scooter, what that's going to do, if it was on that way, it'll make it slower. But if I put it on that way, it's going to change the gear ratio. So when that turns around the whole turn, it's going to fly this around faster. So that's basically that. Uh, these are just sprockets because I'm going to change, chain, um, do the steering back on the front of this motor. This is basically um, the push, these are cycle, 18T cycle sprockets to do change rather the steering back for the car when I do the front of it. Um, right, another thing is when I put these pillar blocks on the back here because these are fitted on here because these are fitted on top really I don't want to do that with these because these look like they're alley and I don't want to put the whole weight of the scooter up like that these really need to be like this it's kind of underneath, so the weight of them. So what I've got to do on here, if I want to keep it parallel, I'm going to have to weld up and build this up. So I'll probably sleeve that, put a bit more square on there, that length, right? Then I'm going to step up so I can get the centre of that parallel with that. And this... This was £12 odd off of eBay and um, for the double length for the two of them, right, which is about that long. I think it was, um, might have been half a metre. Anyway, um, what I've had done, my mate's got a milling machine, he's smoothed the ends off and put an 8mm thread up the end, the same as what holds the wheels on, and a keyway, the same as what's on the same as what's on these, right? Where I've took the brake off of here, I've obviously not using the brake, I'm gonna make or invent another brake to slow it down anyway, but I've had to do two individual axles, really, because it's no good having one axle, right? So when I make this, I'm probably gonna try and get this underneath like that, and because the weight's doing that, I'm going to probably try and make it and weld it up so it's like that kind of thing. So if that's pushing up, that's pushing down. So this is going to make it much stronger by doing it this way. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to tell you. Most of my bolts and stuff I'm buying, most of the stuff I'm buying bolts and things, I'm buying off a bolt based on case and the bolts for these wheels I thought was really brilliant if I used already flanged ones yep so you don't need washes on the inside you can see the clearance on that chain probably by holding that like that um, and then I've put um, stainless washes and spring, stainless spring washes as well and um, dome heads. These are all M8s. Right, now one other quick thing, so I'm waking it up as I go along. Got to, that's what I love about all this. Right, the swinging arm, where the swinging arm goes on, where they only put M8 bolts through here, which is a bit Mickey Mouse, right, I've gone on to I've drilled it through with an M10, okay, and then these are stainless steel bolts, and you all measure it from there to the end of size, not the whole lot. So what these are, these are 65mm M10 65s, which are going in there, obviously I'll put washers and that on there, 
and that has made that much stronger because to me uh, I'd like to make things stronger than they should be and 35 stone going up and down on that's a bit bit feeble for an M8 really okay I hope we haven't forgot anything here um, right let's go one other thing worth mentioning is that when I've put this on here and I've measured I've measured the distance of what the sprocket is from the chassis now on the other side if you push this on that end the side without the brake it's an inch and a half from the outside of the sprocket to there now if you measure it on this one it's a fraction under so what I need to do and I've seen this on quite a few scooters is I'll put a small little kind of washer inside that before I screw the plate on the end that holds the wheel on. Now going back to these plates on the end, because before now on one occasion I did have one of these come undone. Now slightly loose. Now when you screw these on it's a good idea to clean the dirt out of the threads and when you screw your screws back on and your tab to stop you so your wheel won't um, the nut can't come undone when you do this it's a good idea to use some Loctite on the thread or similar kind of thing so there's no way of them creeping creeping undone at all that, that's a, <clears throat> a good tip because before now when I've made some of these cars before now and I've put slightly bigger wheels on or whatever I've done where this isn't 100% exactly in the middle. That's why I'm going to put that washer on there. What happens is you put your body on and you get all the body of your car on and then you look and your wheels are not quite sticking out of the body. One might be slightly bigger than the other. And when you put the mud guards on, unless you look close, you can't notice, but it's irritating if you're trying to get perfection. Right, I've done all the welding on the back end here and I'll just explain to you what I've done. Right, because these pillar block bearings should be up the other way underneath and this one's taking all the strain, I've made some metal brackets that go over the outside ones so that they're not going to break off. Now on the back end of the cordoba I've welded two bits of this, one each side, 11 and a half inches long. But so that there's no way they can break, this is 30 mil square tubing, square section, box section. This is 25. I fold it so I could sleeve it. So I've sleeved it in there so there's no way can that possibly snap or anything. Right. I've got one more of them spaces on the back here than I have the front. I've got four on the front, but I've ended up putting another on this side because the chain was rubbing on the tyre. So I've had to clear that. So after welding on two eleven and a half bits on there, yep, then I've put another bit across there, same box section, 30 mil. Then these two bits in the middle, and that has enabled both axles to go like that. This is working okay now and this is on the bench. I'm going to take it down the road but at the moment on the bench this is as slow as it goes but it's good how quiet it is with the chain driven right so this will be the normal four mile an hour which is faster yep then I'll click it on the 8 mile an hour, which is obviously going to be more than 8 mile an hour. Right. That's to make sure it's working. On the top here, this is inch by half inch rectangular section. I've welded up a square 19 by 18 and a quarter, 2.5 inch 
two bits two and a half inch under there and then I've welded bits on there and made sure it's parallel with the chassis so that it's running straight. Right, apart from that on the back, there's nothing much to tell you. Now, if you get Vespa wheels and Lambretta wheels, some of them are even split rims and some of them are off centre. The Lambretta ones, are, I think, are off centre and the Vespa ones are split in the middle. So that's enabled me to put the narrow side on the inside to, to make it easier to connect up the chains. On here, I've made some chain adjusters and I've elongated these holes, right? So I could play around with this to make the chains tight enough so they're not going to make a noise and obviously because that's trying to pull that way I've got one that way and it's trying to do that backwards I've got that going the other way I've made a kind of a homemade break idea but it's not worked very well um, so I'm going to have to um, redesign that bit Also what I've done on the chassis is I've cut all these bits of metal off because I find they're a bit of a bloody nuisance and it's easier to just use cable ties wherever you want. So I've just cut them off and then got a flap just because sanded them around flat before I've painted it, which is um, an added thing to do. Right, now what I've done on the front, this is two and three quarters there, because I want bigger wheels on, then I've had to obviously bring this forwards because the wheels will hit on here. Right, so I've cut that in half, cut out these little pieces, and then I've sleeved, I've sleeved it like the back end. Right, I've put a piece in here six inches where that is only two and three quarters, but because I've got too much clearance really, if I was to do this again and plan it, I would make that four inches. It didn't need to be six inches, but it's just made the car a bit longer, that's all. Right, I've sleeved this as well, so that the bit of tubing of square section, 30 mil I've banged over, the others folded up, banged it over, so it's double welded. It was already welded each end anyway, like it is on the standard chassis, but now that's made it longer. Right, this bit, this is the steering bar of a sovereign, and this is the steering part of a sovereign cut off. So I've, what I've done, I've sanded the metal bits that were on that and just left these two bits that were cut off here then I put some box section on there 25 mil and <clears throat> lined up the chain I've had to make a couple of these um, but I think if you look on the other videos I've done you'll see roughly how I've done that um, and then I've put these nuts on here, so that when you're welded up, so that you're steering, you're not going to get loads of play on your steering, then obviously you can tighten and slacken these nuts to just take the right amount of strain on the chain, so you've not got any loose steering. And that, on here, uh, if you look on one of the other videos, you can see how you cut this plastic and do it with a soldering iron. Um, and I think I've done a video on the other videos how you weld this up under here. So apart from that, and also another thing on these, um, on these cord over scooters, the suspension's usually a bit of a nuisance because when you buy one, they're nearly always seized up here. So you need to undo all this, get it off, make sure your suspension's working properly. And then put Vaseline on there so it can't seize up again. Um, 
And then also I have put a couple of stays across here to give it a little bit more added strength that way. I've welded these on in case I use running boards. I might not use running boards. If I don't, I can just put an angle grinder with a one mil blade and cut them off. Um, but apart from that, I don't think there's much more um, to say about it. When I got this scooter, for some reason the tracking was going outwards, the front wheels. And if you, if you try and drive one like that, you have trouble. The steering's all a bit kind of wonky. You need to clamp something on here and make sure the wheels are parallel or are fractionally in. Not loads. Now all it needs doing now is I need to take it out and give it a spin. And also, by the way, on the back end there, I have drilled out the 8mm bolts because they're not very strong. And I've put 65mm long stainless steel 10mm bolts in there, drilled it out, fastened them all up, so that's made the back end. And also, where I've put, where I've put this length, extra added length on here, it's given it a bit more leverage, so because these are designed to carry 35 stone, then obviously the suspension will work a bit better if you're not over the top really heavy. One thing I did forget to mention, I've put some spacers under there so the steering can't go so far because it would be easier to roll it. Right, here we go. Forced. It's forced. It's forced.